Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Um, the weather has been a bit on the frightful side. If you have summer where you're at, enjoy it because... Even though the first day of summer came here, somebody forgot to tell the Alaskan weather gods to uh, pay attention to that. You understand. Um, but, so, in my last two videos, I showed you a couple outboards that other than cosmetics, didn't need a whole lot. And you say, well, then why don't you get on out there and do them cosmetics? Because it's hard to do that in 40 knots of wind and rain. You understand? So, we did some other outboard stuff. Just because this Alaskan weather ain't cooperating, don't mean we can't have some outboard fun. And you say, you say, what kind of outboard fun? I show you, I show you, let's get to it.
We're here at the crab festival. And they do have crab at the festival. Crimson crab. Dough buoys. Fish tacos, clam chowder, fish and chips. Yeah, I like that one. There's one I can walk up to. Now there's an interesting little skiff. Um, this is a locally built. You see right there, it says Emerson Boat Works. That's, that's a local shop here that builds those. And you can see that thing got interesting lines on it the way it tapers quite aggressively to the bow as far as the gunnels go and everything but yet it's a it's a nice planing hull and everything on it um, yeah I mean Look at those oar locks they built on there, the, they, how they raised them up. These guys build incredible boats. Um, they are good at what they do. I have had many of their skiffs in my shop, you know, for outboard work and stuff. And uh, they're always, I mean, I, I, I'm just, impressed with the welds they do um, you won't see any garbage welds on those boats they do really good work they have built boats that are just little tending skiffs that some of the larger boats carry on board to lower over the side you know when they're anchored at different ports and stuff all the way up to 50, 60 foot cabin cruisers, um, always made out of super thick. I think it, you know, they, they, uh, I don't know what the standard is right now for these, you know, boutique type boats, but they're, they're always, they always, you can see there's flotation in the back back there um, they're always to spec and always done well this is no e exception I think that's a 60 on there can't really see it from here but oh, I was wrong that's a 40 on there yeah 44 stroke Suzuki I bet it cruises right along though here's one that I don't see much of in up here in Alaska saw a lot of these down in Florida but that's a nice skiff there nice load right says Jets Marine Inc it don't have a jet motor but that's a nice Carolina skiff it's about one of three that I know of up here. 
That's a real nice one. There she sits. Kind of a shame. There she sits. Yep. That's how I find them a lot of times. In junk piles, fishermen's scrap yards, and the like. Oh, there's another one hiding up under here. Up under the toilet. Don't know what it is. It's an Evinrude, but I don't know what horsepower. But there she sits. Yep, there they are. Rotting in away.
Fainers in here. Barely.
got some weird nut holding this rectifier on. Get to them. Now the hoods, the bonnets, the the metals guy at our scrapyard, he don't want nothing to do with plastic, fiberglass, and the like, so I have to take it to the landfill um, to dispose of it. But uh, and most of them, you know, other than needing a good dose of super clean and a little slathering. They'd clean right up and be just fine, but got too many of them, can't keep them all. All right, so there's some of the parts that I always consider taking before I scrap the uh, motor out to the old scrap peep. Carburetors, tiller, handles that have the uh, plastica. Healy coils in them, power packs, coils, recoils if they're in good shape. You can see right there on the top of that box there. Transom clamps. Um, generally before I dump the uh, motors out at the scrap yard, I'll cut off any recoil handles that look good, the rubber part, just stuff like that. So there's some of the goodies. Okay, so the weather today was marginal. It uh, cleared up a little bit, looking better now. I'm hoping tomorrow will be a, a day when I can get a lot more done, but uh, 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm having to get uh, a lot of these junkers parted out and get them to the scrap heap so I can make room for more because they just keep coming. Um, and in fact, I'll show you just in between here and going out to the scrap yard. And I ain't even looked in the scrap yard to see what's there yet that I might want to bring home um, and put back in service. So I don't know what's out there yet. But uh, on the way home, I'll just stop a couple little spots I know. Um, and I'll show you how easy it is for me to come by these, these outboards. Now, it'll dry up eventually, but I was saying that 10 years ago. You understand? And they just keep coming. Um, in fact, I've gotten so many in just this summer that that's why I'm taking a break in repair and doing the parting out and scrapping and stuff is so I can make room. Um, but I do try and take off the good parts um, if they look good. On one of those motors, I think it was that last 55 I put up there, I can tell just by looking at it, the power pack's brand new. Uh, somebody recently replaced that. Um, and then I took those carbs off the 70, not because I want them, but I have a buddy that uh, has treated me really good over the years. And he runs 70s, twin 70s on his boat, and he's a big king salmon uh, tro troller. I get trawler and troller. Troller, troller, troller mixed up. Hey. Troller, troller, troll, troll. He trolls. Been doing it for years. He rebuilds about at least two 70s each winter. And that way he has like four on hands because he runs twin 70s. And he, that way he has four on hands. If one goes down, electrical, cylinder problems, doesn't matter. He doesn't, he's got it all set up where he can just off with that one, on with the next one, keep fishing. We don't get long summers here, and uh, he likes to fish. And so he, uh, he keeps those 70s. So I looked at those carbs. They were in good shape, so I got them off there for him. Um, stuff like the electric primer, foot valves and stuff, those are good to have around. I get a lot of them in. I won't take them off. And if you've seen me putting an outboard in the truck, to go scrap and I didn't take that off it was probably because the nipples are broke I said nipples the little nipples um, they're there's teeny I mean they're they're less than an eighth, eighth of an inch thick and they break off all the time so but if it's got all three of them there I'll I'll save that because that last time I looked on the old inner screen for that uh, foot valve primer assembly unit, whatever you want to call it. It was over a hundred bucks. So there's ways around that. But um, yeah, so I keep those. Some I, I do get people in here once in a while wanting those and I'll sell them to them for next to nothing. So um, the recoils on these 55s, um, something I haven't done and I have several of those big beefy recoils. I believe you could put that on a 70 in line three cylinder. I've never tried it. Anybody out there tried it? Comment down there and let me know if you've done it. Um, I've got a few 70s over there. Um, but I, I was looking at it, I was like, you know, I, I think that would bolt on. And so would you want to pull start a 70? No. But that would be an excellent backup so you could have both. You could have your electric start and one of those 55 pull starts. You would have to put the catch that goes on top of the flywheel. I just never, I've never tried it. So if you've tried it before, let me know. I believe it could be done. Um, and if I get a good specimen victim in here uh, on a 70 or a 65 or something, I might try that. That's something for my old buddy down there in Florida. Two! I'm talking two! You! You ought to try that. I could send you one. I could send you a pull start. You could try it on your 
65, I think that's what you got. And, uh, or 60. You got a three cylinder inline, is what you got. You ought to see if you can put one of these pull starts on there. Make a good video. You understand? So, anyway, it's getting late. I'm tired. I am tired. So, we'll continue this scrapping mission and painting up some cosmetics and doing whatever we're going to do. But you can bet it's going to be some outboard fun for sure. And as always, that is one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are a coming on Inside Outboards with your Cody Bass.